Hi folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I've got a real special treat for you today. I picked up a 1974 Mercury four horsepower single cylinder made in the USA. I don't know if it runs. They told me it ran when it was last used and that's been a long time ago. So I'm going to go through and do some things to it. I'm going to check out the fuel supply. I'm going to check out the spark. I'm going to check out the lower gear oil. And we're going to also, before you ever start a motor up, I'm going to pull that lower unit off and replace that water pump. But let me show you what this motor looks like. It is a cool looking little motor. Well, here she is in all her glory. I just set it on the back of the banana here just to, so I could display it and show it to you. It is a beautiful little motor. It is missing. Oh, man, alive. I tell you what, you hit your elbow on that right there. That hurts so much. Oh my gosh, that hurts so much. Uh, right here, where this hole is, is where there should be a fuel nozzle. And there's not one. Looks like the choke lever's there. Looks like we're missing a shift lever. But uh, we got the prop. Skeg's in good shape. It's not all beat up. Looks about like you'd expect it to be for a 1974. It's getting kind of getting kind of old, but uh, yeah, isn't that a beauty? All oh, this is still on here. That is a cool little cucumber there. It's got a three blade prop. Most of them, I shouldn't say most of them. Some of them I've seen have a two blade. This one has a three blade prop. I have no idea what pitch it is. Maybe I'll find out when I take it off. If I take it off, I probably will. But yeah, it is not too bad a shape for its age. Let's pull the cover off and take a look inside. Let's check it out under the hood. You know, for its age, that thing is darn clean. Even the wires, they're not brittle. They're not all cracking. Equipped with permagap spark plugs. If you watched my last video, you know what that means. And the spark plug looks like it may be original. I find it hard to believe, but I still see black paint on the spark plug. If that's an original spark plug, that's gotta be the most durable spark plug in the history of mankind. But everything under here looks Look how the choke works. It just basically, it's open, closes off. Opens, closes off. That still works. Oh, that's awesome. Let's see here. Let's squeeze the throttle. Looks like all that moves really smooth. Wide open. Nice. It looks like some fresh grease down in there. Looks like it's been well taken care of. Uh, Looks like I could use another little rubber, little booty thing right there. We'll see if we can find one of those or two of those. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get this running. I've seen a few other ones on YouTube on YouTube running. Uh, we'll see this one run. This is small enough. I could probably put it on behind my little boat in my little pond and just kind of buzz around. Now you guys are asking, is this a long shaft or a short shaft? Well, let's just measure it and see. Yeah, this would definitely be considered a short shaft. But uh, like I said, it's it's just all there. Just a few minor pieces to pick up. This has a roll pin that goes in here. So when you pull this lever out and you put the cover on and you pull it in, it's got a little cam action. It pulls that cover down tight. And this cover has a starter recoil winding in it that grabs onto here. Anyway, let's go, let's get some parts ordered for this thing. So I, cause I know what I need now. And, uh, let's see if we can get this thing running. I want to hear it run in my new water barrel. Stay tuned. In order to pull this foot off, there's a half inch. Okay. In order to pull this nut off here, it is a half inch socket. Then in order to pull this nut off that's right here, 
takes a 9 16th wrench. like that it's so cute it's so small now we've cleaned up the shaft a little bit here it's a little dirty down by the pump housing but it looks like a 7 16 we'll remove the nuts down here i gotta remove this rubber piece here it fits kind of loose i think that a new one of those are in order if i can get one this seal around this housing looks crazy loose. Get some of the parts right here. This pump's designed a little differently than the, the Johnson's. Just lift this plate out. And it can go on, only go on one way. Looks like there's a lot of rubbing going on there. Probably worth replacing that. Oh, I wonder if we can lift this out of here. There it goes. There we go. Well, it's better than most. Look at that thing. It's almost straightened all the way back out. So I can't believe that's a, that's not original. It can't be. And then the one thing you want to make sure you don't lose is this little key here. There we go. It is a little tiny thing. So at least now I know what my pump housing looks like. This rubber, this copper pickup tube just presses down into here, which seems like it fits pretty tight yet. Seems like that fits pretty tight in there too. So that rubber, I would say that rubber is substantial, but I didn't like the rubber here. This one looks, there's one down in here. It's looking a little worse for the wear. I'll see if I can get one of those. Then I'll see if I can get this upper seal too. Wouldn't mind replacing that. Well, that's what it's like. Let's go order some parts. Looks like a 5 8 nut here on this prop. strange this had a washer a nut a spacer and then a spline spacer on this particular one next thing i'm going to do is check for spark to make sure this thing's kicking out spark because if there's no spark there's no sense in going any further without ordering some more electronic parts but so what i'm going to do here is i've got me a what is it? 5 8 drill. I got my drill on low, got the spark plug pulled, and I can use this nut on top. This particular motor requires to have the lid on it all the way seated, so it makes it impossible to check spark or compression without using this method. So I'm putting my big drill, or not my big drill, but a drill in here. Then we'll spin this around and see if we can see spark. As you can see there, she's sparking pretty good. Now we're going to do a little compression check now that we know we got spark. Just see what kind of pressure this bad boy pumps up. Let's see if I can put this in a position where you guys can see it. I know it's not ideal. Ah, that's not going to work. Fit here. There, I think you can see that. At least you can see it pump up possibly. There's what we got. That's about, well, that's 90, 100, 110. It's just over 100 pounds. That's not bad for an old two stroke. That'll play. Well, the good news is we got compression. We got good spark. Uh, I picked up some more, some new dowel pins to stick in here for the cam lock because the other ones were bent. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. Good news. New seal showed up today for the Mercury, Mercury 4 horse. As you can see, the hole diameter difference there 
This one on the right is the old one. You can see how wore out that was. That's why it let water in. And this is the new one. I also have a new prop seal and a brand new seal that goes into the shift shaft. So we're going to install all these. As you can see, this one here is the same way. The inner hole is so much larger. So it was, it was shot. So we got new O-ring for here, new seal. The new seal that's going to go in here. We got the new water pump housing inside here. New O-ring around the outside. So let's get all this put back together. I don't know how much detail you really need to see here. We're basically going to press this seal back in. Put a little dab of grease around here. Reinstall this uh, into the lower unit. We also have this. This will fit down in here like that. And we got our new impeller that we're going to put back in. So it'll be all fresh. And then we got a brand new upper cap, which has a new seal in it. And a new rubber piece there for the, uh, I think that's the, uh, that's the uh, pickup water pickup tube goes in there. So lots of new stuff. Should be able to make this thing whole again and, and make it like new. Turns out the best method to get this in here is applying pressure with one screwdriver here while taking another screwdriver and bending the little impellers in the direction they need to go with the key lined up. And then once they went in, it just dropped right down. And now you can see the impellers are in there like they need to be. I'm going to put a little dab of grease down in there so they, on the startup they're not starting up dry. And then we can put the cap back on. We're not putting a lot down in here, just a little bit, just to just to help it out. Now we can put this piece back on. The nice thing is the way they've got these designed, this can only go on one way. So that goes in right there. It's got a little tab that lines up there we got our brand new cap which also has another tab that lines up so this can only go one way this also has the brand new seal here here again I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the seal Now this should have a little bit of rubber compression here because you are compressing the impeller a little bit. Now that we have the water pump completely assembled and ready to go back in, we've greased the end of the spline on the end of both of the shafts, the shift shaft and the drive shaft. I have replaced the seal here as well on the lower gearbox here. And we put grease on the shaft and we put the first spacer in and we're going to put the prop back on. Grease on the splines always, marine grease. So we got that in. We now have all the new parts on the lower unit. It's time to reinstall it. These are really fun because they're so light. Just like that, we're back together on the bottom end. The other thing I've done now is replace these pins on both sides with nice straight new ones. Works great. The key, or the secret, or the key, whatever you want to call it, to installing this lid is you want to make sure you push down on it and get it nice and tight down 
before you close it so the cam can actually suck the lid the rest of the way down without bending your pins. Last but not least, to get this running, I need to install this, but it looks like I only have room for one of these barbs like this. You see how the spring is in there? It's got a little counterboard in there, but I gotta have one of these that are a 90 degree and not straight in order to fit into this motor. It's such a cramped little space to get that into. So I'm gonna run to my local hardware store and see if they've got a hose bar with a 90, and then I can put that counterbore in there. As good luck would have it, went to my local Napa store. They had a 90 degree, exactly what I need. Only thing I gotta do is that, see if you can see down in here, there's a counterbore that this spring fits into. All I gotta do is put that same counterbore in this piece and I can switch it over. Easy peasy. Looks like the counterbore is about 5 16 So I just put a 5 16 drill in there and we're gonna drill it. Looks like about 200 thousandths deep. fits in there like it should this should fit over that little what that is is a spring plunger for this piece here for the shut off so you got to have that spring in there well I got it all stuck back in there got the quick neck here got that reestablished in there so all I got to do now is Twist lock. We got the fuel line reconnected back in here. Now we'll just put a fuel line and a pump on it. We're about ready to start this thing. See if it'll run. Well, the little Mercury's back in one piece. We're gonna, this is the part that makes me nervous. Now we're gonna drop it in the tank of water, hook the fuel line up to it, drop the, uh, get some gas pumped up to it. Cross our fingers and hope I've done everything right. We'll see if it runs. We saw it run, but I think it has one more issue. From what I could tell, when I'd pump the primer bulb, it would get fuel and all of a sudden it would take off and it would go, and then it would die again. So I have a feeling the fuel pump may be a little tired. 
Uh, it's not keeping up. It's not drawing the fuel up out of the tank like it should. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this fuel pump. And we're going to take a look at what's going on inside there. To see if I can discover what's what's going on. Otherwise, it seemed to run pretty nice. Uh, as long as it's got, as long as it was getting fuel, it was running. We just got to make sure it continues to get fuel. So let's take that apart and see what's going on inside there. Looks like I'm gonna order a fuel pump kit. This seems like it should move a lot more than it does or be a little more limber than it is. So I have a feeling it might be a little tired. And that might be why it's not pumping as much fuel as it should be. So we're gonna order a kit. Once the kit gets here, we'll rebuild it and see if we can get it running again. Good news folks, in the mail came some new parts. Looks like we've got uh, here was the old diaphragm. Let's see if I can get this in the... I have my suspicion that the old fuel pump wasn't acting quite right. This seems pretty stiff. I'm kind of curious here. I'm going to open it up in front of you and with you to see what the new part feels like. Oh, wow. That is so much more supple and soft. Here's the old one, and it's like, I don't know if you can hear that. It just sounds hard. Look, listen to this. This is so much softer. So, my suspicions were correct that chances are this diaphragm wasn't pumping, wasn't acting enough, wasn't pumping enough fuel, because when I would squeeze the bulb, I could get it to run again, but then it would die shortly thereafter. So in the fuel pump kit comes the new gaskets and over here behind the cardboard piece. Let's see what else we got here. Doo, doo, doo. Come on. There's a couple of check valves that come with it as well. Can you see that? Can I make sure I'm getting this in the picture? Me aim this down a little bit. So yeah, we got a couple of check valves that came with the kit. And a couple of gaskets, new gaskets here. This has three gaskets, which is interesting. And according to what was on there, looks like it was using two of this style and not using this one at all. But that usually is what happens. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, see what I got here? Boom, shakalaka. There's that other gasket with the two holes goes right there. Boom, boom, like that. And then I'll have to figure out how this check valve go, gets in and out. So, anyway, I got all my pieces for the fuel pump. The other thing I did get too I thought I was going to, I'm going to go ahead and pull this carburetor off here. Go back over here. I'm going to go ahead and pull the carburetor off. And I've got, I just bought the gasket kit for the carburetor. I didn't buy the needle seat and the float and all that fun stuff. And we'll see. But once I get it apart, we'll see what's in there. Everything I took out so far, because the float sits right here, all that seemed to be in pretty good shape. So I just ordered new gaskets to replace some gaskets gonna, that I'm going to disturb when I pull this off. Because I want to blow through all the orifices in the, uh carburetor to make sure it's clean and clear and doing, doing what i wanted to do so with that being said let's get this carburetor pulled off let's get this fuel pump rebuilt and let's get see if we can make this thing run tonight i really love to hear it run and run well and I've, from what i've been learning from what i've been seeing on my uh youtube channel is you guys like to see stuff run you like to you like to see more videos of uh me working on a motor and then hearing that motor run because that motor run that's the big payday. That's the payoff. That's the what we what we work for is to hear that motor run. So let's get busy. 
working on this stuff right now. Good news is it's all back together new fuel pump pieces in place carburetor gaskets in place everything looked clean i blew it all out with air all the orifices and passages seem to be clear and i have no leftover pieces that's always a plus that's always a plus so i think i'm ready to hang this back in the tank put the cover on put some gas to it and see if she'll stay running so let's do that now. Wow, talk about run like a top. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. That thing just second pull. On the third pull.
pretty good. I love it. Runs like a top. Overhaul fuel pump and carburetor. Now if she stays running, it runs like a champ. Okay, we've let it sit for 45 minutes. I'm gonna move this to the start position. Not gonna choke it since it's only been 45 minutes. Let's see if she fires. Whoa. Like a monster. Well, folks, there's nothing more exciting than hear a, run, a motor run like it should, runs like a top. A 1974 Made in USA spline drive prop Mercury 4 horse outboard. The Mercury 40 Thunderbolt ignition. This thing runs as good as I'm guessing as it was when it was new. Thing just runs like a top, pumps water like, a, like it should. Uh, it's doing everything it's supposed to do and it starts you put it in the start position here and just give her a, a yank Harder yank. Whoops left the choke on This one you have to put the choke on to kill it I'm running 50 to 1 in here. I don't know if that's a little rich, but I'd rather be a little rich than too lean and mess up the motor. I might do a little research to see how, how lean you can go with these motors. I'm using AMS oil, uh, two-stroke oil. It is the best stuff i found. I like it. AMS oil products are just, in my book, number one. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this video. I enjoy working on it. Uh, yeah, it turns out the fuel pump, the carburetor is really pretty clean overall. Uh, new gaskets in the fuel pump, or not fuel pump, new in the carburetor for the intake and the, the float bowl and stuff like that. But the real trick was getting the fuel pump membrane back to new. It has, it's limber. It moves like it's supposed to now. It consistently pumps gas. Uh, actually, I came back out here, as you saw, I started it up about 45 minutes after it sat and popped right off. And didn't primer bubble or nothing, just popped right off. So it's good. Uh, I'm pleased. I couldn't be more happy with how it turned out. It is an awesome little motor. Uh, I'm going to check the lower, lower uh, unit again. Uh, I'm going to sit for about a day or two now and let that oil in the lower unit settle out. Pull the plug, see if any water comes out to make sure, see if all my seals are working like I'm hoping they will, or we're hope, hoping they do. Uh, if that's the case, then I might say goodbye to this bad boy, and some lucky buyer is going to get a motor that just is tip top, tip flipping top. So, you guys want to hear it run again, don't you? Okay, here I'll just put it 
Bring it up to the start position. Boom. It don't get any better than that. That is a sweet, easy starting machine. So, with that being said, folks, get out there and do something fun. Find something you enjoy do, doing. Do it every day. Do it as often as you can. I know we got to work in these days and age. We got to work and play, work and play. I work to live. So, eventually, someday, I'll be able to live to live. But right now, I have to work to do the fun stuff in life. Uh, we'll just keep doing it. And uh, enjoy every bit, of, every bit of this precious life, folks. And we're not on this old crazy marble for very long in the real scheme of things. So get out there and have some fun. Enjoy life. If it has a motor, you're going to have fun with it. So this is Michael saying have a good time. I'm out.
still here? Come on. Go do something fun now. Michael out again.